Australia is the sixth biggest country on the planet, as a matter of fact, its size is generally equivalent to that of the United States without Alaska. In any case, assuming we take a gander at the guide of the United States and Australia around evening time, we see totally different examples. On the US side, urban communities and modest communities reach far inland, and on the Australian side, the domain on the inside is essentially uninhabited and enormous and few urban communities are found exclusively on the coast. Albeit as far as outright populous it isn't fitting to analyze the two nations, this difference assists with seeing the populous examples of the two nations. All in all, the inquiries are, the reason do practically 80% of Australians live here when they have such an enormous area on the inside for what reason really do individuals in the United States live inside away from the coasts? Also, why has the Australian government neglected to decentralize its populace? Both the native Australians and the main European pioneers who came to Australia chose where to take up residence in light of the accessibility of the assets they expected to endure like water, food and haven. What's more, it was typical for the main pilgrims to show up in a country to do such along the coasts and later start to investigate the inside of the nation establishing new settlements. The principal reason is that the vast majority of the Australian outback is desert or semi-desert, with endured, disintegrated territory and outrageous climatic circumstances to help enormous urban communities and towns. These desert regions have emerged in light of the fact that Australia gets the second least precipitation on the planet after Antarctica. On the focal locale of the nation is Lake Eyre, where a few streams stream, however more often than not they have no water. Thus, it is easy to close why this piece of Australia is essentially uninhabited. Conversely, in the eastern district, along the whole coast, there is the great dividing range and, in contrast to the inside, a large portion of the beachfront regions are green and favoured with new water. Also, to that end, Australia's populous designs are areas of strength for so. Water implies life, it works with endurance and frequently converts into bountiful food since streams make the close by soil richer for developing harvests. It additionally makes fishing and the raising of domesticated animals and different creatures conceivable. Subsequently, the principal native Australians looked for additional tenable puts on the east and south banks of what is known as the Murray River. Crude clans utilized a wide range of components of the regular habitat to support their lifestyles like stones, bones, plants and shells. Nonetheless, a fresh water supply, for example, a waterway was maybe the main asset. Be that as it may. Early pilgrims got comfortable in this region of the country not just due to admittance to new water and broad farmland yet in addition due to the gold rush. This pulled in a great many foreigners fundamentally to New South Wales and Victoria. In these two states where Australia's biggest urban communities, Sydney and Melbourne, are found, the biggest gold revelations occurred. Thus, gold pulled in a huge number of outsiders and changed the eventual fate of Australia. However, the first explanation that makes sense of why practically 80% of Australians live on the east shore of the nation is that they have simple admittance to water and in the inside of the country they don't. Furthermore, this could likewise make sense of why settlements were made in the United States, on the east coast as well as inside of the country. The explanation is the Mississippi River this 3,700 km long stream crosses basically the whole United States from north to south, coursing through 10 states from Minnesota to New Orleans. Water isn't just imperative for human utilization or horticulture, yet in addition for the business since most eventual outcomes require enormous amounts of water to be done. Financial exercises connected with fishing are created around this stream and the woods in the Mississippi Valley energize lumber creation. The prolific terrains because of their closeness to the stream work with the development of rice, sugar cane, cotton and cereals. Moreover, water is likewise used to create power by certain ventures. That, yet delivery is the least expensive method for moving enormous amounts of products, which is the reason the majority of a country's biggest turban communities are situated on the coasts or on the banks of a huge stream.
It is said that the traversable waterways of the world were the throughways of human advancements since old times today these streams are as yet the least expensive method for moving products. The Mississippi conveys 10% of the country's merchandise, approximately 460 million tons of products like coal, steel, aluminum and agricultural products. The Mississippi makes sense of a similar settlement design that Canada experienced with the St. Lawrence River, New York with the Hudson River or Egypt with the Nile River. To put it plainly, a waterway like the Mississippi and its whole stream network makes sense of to a limited extent why in the United States there are various urban communities such a long way from the coasts and in Australia, there are not. In Australia, the couple of individuals who live in these desert ranges and with troublesome admittance to water are generally native individuals who, notwithstanding conquering many difficulties to make do, keep on picking this domain in light of the fact that their association with the land is exceptionally profound. The other Australians are gathered in a couple of urban communities in their metropolitan regions like Sydney, Melbourne and Brisbane on the east coast and Perth on the west coast. Be that as it may. The public authority needs to change this pattern. There is a continuous discussion in Australia about the choice of whether to draw in additional settlers. In the country, 30% of the populace is comprised of foreigners over the most recent 20 years alone more than 3.6 million have shown up, a big number thinking about its all-out populace of 25 million. Thus, the difficulty among Australians is that this deluge of settlers has helped the country demographically in light of the fact that it has expanded the fruitfulness rate, that is, because of migration, enough children are being brought into the world in Australia to keep up with sufficient populist development. However, then again, some say that the big number of workers Australia gets really is unreasonable in light of the fact that the urban communities and assets, for example, Water won't uphold the 36 million individuals Australia hopes to have by 2050. Hence, the public authority has attempted to decentralize the populace, or at least, to make motivations and plans for additional individuals to reside in places other than the famous ones, for example, Sydney, Melbourne and Brisbane and consequently alleviate the strain on these urban areas. As a matter of fact, the public authority has had programs set up for quite a long time to draw in outsiders to the locales from the coasts. There are explicit visas for this, yet in spite of the way that there might be work open doors and great personal satisfaction in these districts, eventually, migrants act like youthful Australians and are drawn in definitively by Melbourne, Sydney, Perth and Brisbane. It seems okay according to a worker's perspective most are talented and taught so it is sensible that they need to reside in the urban communities where they track down the best positions as well as where they have the simplest admittance to colleges, retail plazas, clinical focuses, sports offices, diversion, etc. Also, the higher populous thickness of enormous urban areas makes it bound to live approach others of a similar language and culture. Furthermore, these reasons make sense to some extent why the public authority has bombed in its endeavor to populate with outsiders region of the country other than the three or four major urban areas on the coasts forever. In a past video on the channel, we referenced how the Canadian government has likewise looked to populate the northern piece of the nation. And yet in Australia the two locals outsiders actually really like to live in the major southern urban communities like Toronto and Montreal. From this one could reason that controlling individuals' inclinations can be exceptionally convoluted for an administration and thusly almost certainly, this guide of Australia around evening time will, in any case, appear to be identical in 2050, just with these bigger urban communities. Gratitude for watching, see you in the following video.